This problem was also taken off of the AP Level B physics exam. This is from the year 1993, problem number two. So let's see, we're told that the charge of negative 16 microcoulombs is located at x equals 4 meters. So that's this charge right here. And then we've got a second charge, positive 9 microcoulombs at y equals 3 meters. So we see that other charge here. We have to find the magnitude of the electric field at the origin due to charge Q1. So that's just saying, imagine we put a test charge at the origin. Uh, what force would it experience due to the effect of charge Q1? Well, because Q1 is negative, that test charge would be attracted. So we have a force, or better yet, an electric field vector that shows that there would be an attraction with this test charge. And the other charge, Q2, being positive, would repel our test charge. Okay, so we can represent both of these as vectors. We gotta calculate the magnitudes. So we'll call this E1, and the one pointing down is E2, and E1 is just equal to KQ1 divided by x squared, and likewise E2 in magnitude is KQ2 divided by y squared. This is 9 times 10 to the 9th, times 16 times 10 to the negative 6th, divided by 4 squared. Well, that's nice. 4 squared gives us 16, so that cancels out. And really, we just have uh, 10 to the 9th and 10 to the negative 6th gives us 10 to the 3rd. And then we still have this 9, so E1 is equal to 9,000 newtons per coulomb and it's directed to the right. Okay, so E2 is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th times 9 times 10 to the negative 6th divided by 3 meters squared. Oh, and again, 3 squared cancels with this 9. So it looks like E2 is also 9,000 newtons per coulomb, but instead pointing down. So we've calculated each of these individual contributions to the net electric field. So it says on the axes below, draw and label vectors to show these. Oh, I already did that on the diagram above. And indicate the resultant electric field. All right. So I don't mind copying these again. There's E1. There's E2. And obviously, by the parallelogram method, the resultant, or the net electric field, is going to point at an angle of 45 degrees due to the fact that these both have the same magnitude, 9,000 newtons per coulomb. And so the net electric field should be equal to rad 2 times 9,000 newtons per coulomb. which gives us approximately 12,728 newtons per coulomb if we round off to the nearest whole number. Calculate the electric potential at the origin. Well, that's always easier than calculating electric field because we don't have to do any vector math. So the net electric potential at the origin is KQ1 over X plus KQ2 over Y. This is 9 times 10 to the 9th times, well, um, six, negative 16 times 10 to the negative 6th over 4 plus positive 9 times 10 to the negative 6 over 3. Uh, let's pull out this 10 to the negative 6, combine it with this 10 to the 9th, so we just have 10 to the 3rd. So negative 16 over 4 
is negative 4. 9 over 3 is 3. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So we have the net electric potential is negative 9,000 joules per coulomb. Now a third charge shows up. It's brought from very far away and placed at the origin. And this charge Q3 is negative 4 microcoulombs. Indicate the direction of the force. Well, the electric field, remember, pointed down to the right. And because this is a negative charge, it experiences a force opposite the direction of the electric field. So there we have it. That's the force on charge number three. Calculate the work that had to be done by some external agent to bring this charge to the origin. So the work done by the field is negative, the change in potential energy, but the work done by an external agent is positive, the change in potential energy. Now, this is the uh, potential energy at the origin, when it's at the origin, minus the potential energy when it's very far away, but we know that's going to be zero. Um, or we can say this is Q times the potential at the origin minus the potential infinitely far away. We've already calculated the potential at the origin it is negative 9,000 joules per coulomb. And unless otherwise stated, we always assume the electric potential infinitely far away is zero. So the work we're looking for is Q3 multiplied by the net electric potential at the origin, which is uh, negative 4 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs multiplied by negative 9,000 joules per coulomb, or instead of the thousands, we can call this 10 to the third. 10 to the negative sixth and 10 to the third gives us 10 to the negative third. These negatives cancel out. Uh, 4 times 9 is 36, so 36 times 10 to the negative third, 1, 2, 3, point zero three six joules of work were done to bring that charge to the origin. And that's it. Let's move on to another example problem.